हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर संदीप वालिया हेड ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट यूनिवर्सिटी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टूरिज्म एंड हॉस्पिटैलिटी मैनेजमेंट चंडीगढ़ यूनिवर्सिटी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द मॉड्यूल कम्युनिटी बेस्ड टूरिज्म अंडर द पेपर स्पेशल इंटरेस्ट टूरिज्म आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग दिस मॉड्यूल द स्टूडेंट्स विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द कंसेप्ट ऑफ कम्युनिटी बेस्ड टूरिज्म they will also know about the principles and benefits of community based tourism approach the students will also understand the typology and level of community participation they will also know about the various examples of community based tourism the students will be able to identify various strategic approaches to make community based tourism effective dear students with sustainable tourism development becoming increasingly popular among global leaders community based tourism is the one of popular strategic options adopted by various destinations in comparison to the mass tourism policy makers who supported mass tourism are focused on increasing the number of tourists at a specific destination and simultaneously create infrastructure which contributed to tourist satisfaction However, over the years destinations have experienced negative impacts of the mass tourism model as it has led to polluted air water overuse of carrying capacity negative environmental impact and other similar issues in last two decades new age form of tourism has developed community based tourism has a great potential to create a more sustainable tourism industry one of the primary objectives achieved through community based tourism approach is sustainable rural development and poverty alleviation by bringing in economic and social benefits to the local communities as tourism is consumed in the same place where it is produced it has a great potential to generate economic benefits and employment for the local people at the core of the community based tourism approach is the empowerment of local communities and thereby involving them in the planning and decision making in the tourism development process the local communities are motivated enough to participate in various aspects of tourism business and other aspects related to the destination development this module will discuss about the concept of community based tourism its definition principles and its real benefits to community in the first part and later in the second part drivers of community based tourism barriers to the growth of community based tourism are discussed let us take on the definition of community based tourism first community based tourism has been defined by various researchers and scholars in various ways according to goodwin and centilli community based tourism is defined as a form of tourism where the local community has substantial control over the and involvement in its development and management and a major proportion of the benefits remains within the community even those who are not directly involved in tourism enterprises gain some form of benefit as well according to asian community based tourism is a tourism activity community owned and operated and managed or coordinated at the community level that contributes to the well-being of the communities through supporting sustainable livelihoods and protecting valued socio-cultural traditions and natural and cultural heritage resources according to asia pacific economic cooperation tourism working group community based tourism is a form of local tourism favoring local service providers and suppliers and focused on interpreting and communicating the local culture and environment it has been persuaded and supported by communities local government agencies and non government organizations dear students let us now discuss about some of the principles of community based tourism the principles of community based tourism advocated that the successful community based tourism should involve local from the start of any project and in every aspect of tourism development in the concerned area the project should also encourage locals to participate and build community pride it should also conserve and preserve the local tourism resources and maintain 
uniqueness of the community. It should also ensure environmental sustainability. It should also enhance the quality of life of the local residents, provide enough employment and economic earning opportunities. CBT will provide equitable benefits to all sections of the communities. The community-based tourism will also result in gaining respect, cultural differences and lost course culture learning. It should also help in maintain tourism access and create financial provision for building. Community-based tourism approach provides various benefits to the members of the local communities. These benefits can be categorized under the following heads. The first one is the economic benefits. One of the major advantages of CBT is to provide employment opportunities which results in higher household income. Further, it has a potential to generate independent source of revenue for the local people. The second one is the social benefits. CBT enhances quality of life of the local residents and build community pride. Further, there is evidence that CBT builds the capacity for community management organizations. It has also been found that CBT promotes social inclusions as members of various social segments come together to part of the community in region. The next one is the cultural benefits. CBT fosters cultural exchange especially when the tourists and the host interact with each other. The host community as well as the tourist understands each other and slowly and gradually builds respect for the community. The next one is the environmental benefits. Whenever local community is involved in the tourism development process, they become sensitive towards the environmental issues. They take initiative to conserve and preserve the local area and take special efforts to manage the waste disposal and thereby encouraging environmental responsibility. Then there are educational benefits too, which is the other factor. CBT creates new profession in the community and the locals are motivated to acquire new skills like learning new language or new cuisine to serve the guests. They acquire new skills and knowledge and cross-fertilization of ideas take place within the communities. Then the next benefit is the political benefit. At the core of the CBT is the empowerment of the local people. Therefore, community-based tourism approach increases the power of the community. They feel more empowered and therefore take special efforts towards creating new opportunities for tourism development in the region. The next is the health benefits. CBT promotes good hygiene and the locals are motivated to know more about the tastes and preferences of the tourists. This encourages host residents to adopt new cuisines which have impact the nutritional status of the local residents. Then the next is the infrastructure development. With increase in the role of communities in tourism development, the local people are motivated to create support infrastructure that can support tourism in the region. Let us now discuss about the drivers of the community-based tourism. Some of the most common drivers for introducing community-based tourism includes the first one is a provider of economic opportunities. As the local people of the community of the area will be engaged in the tourism related activities, therefore the community based tourism will provide various economic opportunities to the local community. The second one is the it reduced tendency of urban drift. It is a common tendency that in order to search for job and livelihood, people sometimes leave their native places and move to urban areas in search of employment opportunities and earning their livelihood. If the local population will get ample of self-employment and job opportunities at the native places, they will not move to the urban areas. Due to community-based tourism, ample of employment or job opportunities will be created in the region and people will stop migrating to the urban areas. And therefore, the community-based tourism will result in reduced urban drift. The next one is the poverty elevation. By providing ample amount of opportunities of self-employment to community, community-based tourism can result in poverty elevation of the area. As the tourist visiting the area will spend some money in the area for various tourism-related activities, the community and the area will gain economic benefits 
and results in the poverty alleviation. Then the next one is the strategy for women empowerment. The community stakeholders can propose and make some strategies for the women empowerment thereby involving women of the community decision making processes. Women being integral part of the community can make difference if being provided an opportunity in the decision making process at the community level. The next one is the community revitalization and development. Community based tourism thereby providing opportunities of not only social development but economic development too. Therefore, this will also help in the revitalization and development of community socially as well as economically. CBT also helps in biodiversity conservation. Community based tourism also helps in biodiversity conservation. Community has now started reaping its benefits as the local community has now realized the importance of resources available within the community. Therefore, this type of tourism also results in the protection and preservation of natural resources available within the community. The next one is the preserving tangible and intangible cultural heritage. As the community-based tourism offers its natural as well as the cultural resources as the main tourism products of the community concerned, the community has realized that the tourists are curious to know more about them. The tourists want to enrich their experience about the community regarding their lifestyle, day-to-day -day activities, their livelihood and also to learn and know about their culture. Therefore, this type of tourism has also resulted in preserving tangible and intangible cultural heritage of the community. Overall community-based tourism is protecting the indigenous cultural heritage of their community. Let us now discuss about the typology and levels of community participation. In the year 1969, Sherry and Sins proposed ladder of citizen participation according to which we can access the level of participation of any community in a region. At the core of this approach was the redistribution of power for have not citizens. He proposed a typology of eight levels of participation with two levels corresponding to non-participation three corresponding to tokenism and three corresponding to citizen power, which is at the top of the ladder. The eight steps are as follows. The first one is the manipulation. This is a stage where citizens or community members are not involved in the planning and development process. The policy makers have no mechanism to seek the inputs from the community members from the tourism development in their region. The second one is the therapy. In this, the administrators feel that community members do not have the mental aptitude to contribute the development process. The third one is the informing. This step depicts the first stage legitimate citizen participation wherein the community members are informed about their rights and responsibilities. However, the flow of information is only one way that is restricted to sharing information and there is no mechanism to seek the feedback of the community members. The fourth one is the consultation. In this stage, citizens' opinion are invited but there is no assurance that the views shall be taken into consideration or not. Experts believe that this mechanism is more of a window dressing ritual. Then the next one is placation. Moving a stage ahead under this step, administrators create committees, boards or advisory committees wherein in select community members are involved in the planning process. The next one is the partnership. In this stage, the power is redistributed wherein the administrators and community members agree to share planning and decision making responsibilities. The next one is the delegated power. At this level, the situation could arise wherein the citizens could achieve dominant decision making authority over a specific plan or a program. They could be given charge to plan and execute a project on their own. Then there is citizen control. At this stage, the community members have full control on all policy-making governance and managerial aspects of the project reflecting genuine participation with highest run of community empowerment. There are other popular typologies based on the ladder of participation which can also be used to understand the level of community participation. Some of them are discussed below. The first one is Deschler and Stock typology proposed in the year 1985. According to this typology, 
participation can be classified as either pseudo participation or genuine participation and compress the eight steps into four as domestication, paternalism, cooperation and empowerment. Then the second one is the Wilcox typology. It is proposed in the year 1994. There are five stages of participation which are information, consultation, deciding together, acting together and supporting. The next one is the Pretty typology. Proposed in the year 1995, this is a popular framework to understand the level of community participation. There are seven types of participation which are manipulative participation, pretense with nominated representative having no legitimacy of power, passive participation, unilateral announcements without listening to people's responses, participation by consultation that is external agents define problems and informing gathering process. The next one is the participation for material incentives that is the people participate by contributing resources in return for material incentives. The next one is the functional participation that is external agents encourage participation to meet predetermined objectives. Then there is interactive participation that means people participate in joint analysis. And the last one is the self mobilization which means people take initiatives in dependency of external institutions. Then there is Chogil typology which was proposed in the year 1996 especially for underdeveloped countries. According to this typology there are eight hierarchy levels which are as follows self-management, conspiracy, informing, diplomacy, dissimulation, concentration, partnership and empowerment. Then the next one is the Towson typology. While discussing community participation in context of developing economics, Towson classifies community participation into three types namely coercive participation that is equivalent to manipulation and therapy of Einstein's ladder, induced participation which means equivalent to informing consultation and placation of Einstein's ladder and spontaneous participation which means equivalent to partnership delegated power and citizen control of Einstein's ladder. Let us now discuss about barriers to community participation. Though community based tourism approach has various benefits and can lead to positive outcomes, yet in reality community participation is an idealistic situation and there are various barriers to community participation. In a classic study by Siva Tosson in the developing economy identified various barriers which can prevent communities to participate in the tourism development process. These barriers are Centralization of public administration, lack of coordination between government and citizens, lack of information obviously, lack of professional attitude by the government agencies, then there is lack of expertise, then alleged domination that is benefits occur only to select few at the destination. The next one is the lack of appropriate legal system which encourages community participation. Limited access to finances by the community members. Then lack of trained manpower and high opportunity cost to participate in the development activities. The next one is the limited capacity of poor people. It also includes apathy and low awareness in the community. And in addition to these barriers, there are more factors that can prevent community members to participate. These barriers are inter or intra group conflicts, gatekeeping by local leaders, excessive pressure for immediate results, obviously the population size, it matters a lot, disinterest within beneficiary community, then there is belief system of the communities which is also a major part. Then the next one is the land and resource disputes, little or misplaced marketing, inadequate infrastructure. If the government is keen to involve the communities in the tourism development process, they should make an effort to eliminate these barriers. Let us discuss some of the case studies on community based tourism. There are various projects across the world which have successfully implemented community based initiatives. Some of these are briefly explained here. The first one is Chalalan Ecology in the Bol Bolivian Amazon created in the year 1995. This is a joint initiative of Conservation International and Bolivia and the rainforest community of San Jose de through 
nature based tourism they have created eco lodges which are fully owned and managed by the local community members the local community members have been trained on various activities including housekeeping food preparation tour guiding marketing and other issue related to witness more than 74 families receive direct economic and employment benefits from the tourism the next one is the quizzing homestays which is in the state of sikkim in india established in the year 2002 approximately 15 bhutia families of south sikkim initiated this community based tourism project with the help of a local ngo sikkim development foundation the local villagers established quizzing tourism development committee for promoting community based tourism in the region today they provide experiential based tourism wherein the tourists can stay with local people enjoy their cuisine participate in daily course and of the families and can even go on village hikes or short treks the community member shares the profit generated out of the income and also maintain a portion of it towards the maintenance of the tourism infrastructure the next is parabikulam tiger reserve community based ecotourism in palakkad kerala since the year 2004, a joint forest and participatory management concept was introduced through which there are seven eco-development committees which serve the needs of the local tribal people. The local tribal have got employment opportunity for benefiting more than 260 families of the region. At present, the reserve officer offer jungle safari, trekking, jungle camps, paid natural camps and related tourism experiences. In this category, the next one is the Tribal Tourism in Chhattisgarh. The Tribal Tourism Project of Chhattisgarh with a budget of over 100 crore rupees aims at two main components that is ethnic tourist village and ethnic tourism development. The aim is to involve the local communities and encourage the promotion of tourism which will help to generate employment and result in higher economic benefits. The next one is the Homestay Scheme in India. Various states across the country are promoting homestays to promote community involvement in the tourism sector. In the year 2008, the Department of Tourism and Civil Aviation of Himachal Pradesh came up with a homestay scheme in the 2008 to woo tourists and broaden the tourism base in the state. The objective was to take tourism to the interior and rural areas of the state. Recently, Odisha Tourism Development Corporation also have signed a memorandum of understanding with yatra.com to promote homestay facilities in the state other states including rajasthan maharashtra kerala karnataka tamil nadu are also aggressively promoting homestay especially to the international tourists who want to experience the indian way of living let us now discuss about making community based tourism effective for making any community based tourism project effective there are few considerations which should be kept in mind and these considerations are all the stakeholders should be open to promote community based tourism projects at their destinations the type and level of community participation should be decided by the local residents only there should be an enabling policy environment and community based tourism should fit in with existing development plans an appropriate system and management structures should be put in place for managing the community-based tourism operations. Identify appropriate funding resources. Develop mechanisms to ensure equitable sharing of benefits. Then there is to create a plan for asset maintenance and management. To manage supply and demand for sustainability in the concerned area. Develop quality standards and mechanisms to maintain standards within the community for the community-based tourism. Capacity building and training of communities by providing them adequate skill-based learning. The next one is to manage the change process and develop proper leadership team. Develop proper marketing plan so as to attract the international tourists at the destinations. Build relationships with tourism stakeholders for the smoother and proper functioning of the tourism Collaborate with tourism authorities and provide sector to our operators. Dear students, let us now summarize the module. This module has discussed the concept of community-based tourism 
its relevance and importance in promoting sustainable development at the destinations. Community-based tourism not only provides economic benefits to the local community members, but a range of other benefits like social, cultural, environmental, health and similar other benefits also gets accrued to the community members in the longer run. The proponents of community-based tourism approach call for an integrated involvement of all the stakeholders in the development process. We have also discussed various typologies and levels of community participation approach which is used by various policy makers across the world. Some of them discussed in this module include Einstein's ladder of citizen participation, Pratt's typology, Coggill's typology and Dawson's typology. Though the benefits of community-based approach are enormous, we also discussed various barriers to community participation, especially in the developing economies. The success of community-based tourism depends largely on how the policy makers eliminate these barriers. The module has also discussed various strategic approaches on how to make the community-based tourism effective. With these words, I sum up this module. Thank you.